Hey guys, it's May May, and I wanted to show you this cute little puppy dog Valentine treat holder. And let me show you how it works. This is just a little Hershey's candy bar, and it just slides in this little area right here. And this opens so you can have a little Valentine sentiment underneath, and we're gonna make this together today. Now, you don't have to put candy in here. Just about anything fits. Let me show you. Maybe you have a pencil or like a little pencil pack you wanted to put in there. Look how cute that would be to put a pencil or a pen, maybe some erasers. Um, what else do I have laying here we could put in there? Oh, look at this. This is one of those funny pens that I think is so cute. You could put one of these in there, anything, right? So it's left up to your imagination and I'm gonna show you how to make four from one piece of cardstock. That's what I love. We can get a whole bunch of them from one piece of cardstock and save us some money. Okay, so four and a quarter. All right, we're gonna cut this paper in half and then we're gonna cut it in half again which is five and a half. We started with an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Don't stress about the measurements. I'll put them in the blog post below, but that's all we're doing. Quartering down a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper. So we're gonna take this and put it into our scoreboard and we're gonna put it down on the five and a half inch side and we're gonna score this in half. And half of five and a half is two and three quarters. So I'm gonna score it here. And then I'm gonna take it and turn it and I wanna make a pencil mark. And you can do this with a pencil or you actually could just make a mark with your um, score tool, which is fine, I did that too, if you didn't wanna to have to worry about a pencil mark. But here, we're gonna mark the halfway point. So this is four and a quarter, so the halfway mark is two and one eighth. So I'm just making myself a little mark because we're gonna make his nose in that area. You'll see how that works. So there's one, look how simple this is. Five and a half, scored it two and three fourths, turn it, Make a mark at two and one eighth. Same thing, you're gonna get four from one piece of paper. Now I'm not gonna make four with you today. I just wanna show you how quickly the construction of these guys can go. So these four we're making right here in real time. Super easy. All right, two and three fourths. Don't get too fast though, because if you're like me, you'll get off on your measurements and then you'll just have wasted paper. Nah, you'll just have new scraps for your scrap stash. Okay, so let's go to one of them and our trimmer. Now, all we're gonna do is make two slices. So from the pencil mark we made to the middle score line here, we're gonna angle cut in our trimmer. So I'm gonna put my pencil mark in the cut line of my trimmer, and I'm gonna line up that first or that middle score mark in my trimmer, and I'm gonna slice. Now, save this, you can use that for something else. That's a good um, scrap there. Matter of fact, I might have an idea in a minute that I can show you two of these guys. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. Score mark in my cut line, pencil mark in my cut line. And let me give you a tip. When you're making these point cuts like this, sometimes if you come from underneath and you push up, you can get that kind of ruffle before it starts to cut. Here's what you do. Plant or sink your blade into where you're cutting and then go in one direction and then the other. And we don't put any unneeded force or pressure on that little point right there. So we get a nice crisp point that way. So I like to call it setting my blade. So let me show you that one more time. So here's this guy. The first time it's not a big deal because I'm cutting against a solid piece here. So I can just go from the bottom up. Y'all know I like to slice from the bottom up. I think you get a better cut. But here, if I do the same thing, see how I'm going to go from this point, right? Because I'm going to go from the bottom. Sometimes if I go there and I push, I can get a wrinkle. So I'm just going to take my blade, put it anywhere onto the page, set it, push up and down. So just a little tip for your trimmer. I'll go ahead and cut these because I might need these. You never know what you need little Valentine treats for, right? These are perfect for your classrooms at school. They're perfect for Sunday school. They're super cute. I'm also gonna pull out a really old stamp set, which I'm super excited about to play with these guys too, to show you. So that is this little dude. Now let's talk about um, stamping. You can see here that he has a little stamped face with little closed eyes. I thought that was super cute. And he also had this little bone. Let's start with the bone. So here's what I'm using. Remember I told you I'm gonna pull out a really old stamp set? I'm pulling out a stamp set from my uh, stamp line called Trixie's Valentine. Now you guys may remember, Trixie was my little puppy that we had for almost, I think 14 total years before she passed away. But this little Valentine always reminds me of her because we made this about her. And I'm gonna use that bone and a bunch of other things here too. So here's my bone and I'm stamping it with some, I'm just using Memento for this one. So I'm gonna stamp it in some Memento ink. Now, I'm gonna fussy cut these just because I'm sitting here and I'm not in a hurry. I got nowhere to be and nothing to do. But you could totally do this with your scanning cut. That would be super easy. And if you don't have the stamp set, 
and you have any other stamp sets that might have a little doggy bone or a Cricut or a Silhouette or something like that, you can get super creative and do them on your other machines. Now, one thing I'm going to do, before I cut this out, I found that this was easier. I'm going to go ahead and stamp some sentiments into them. So then I don't have to come back and stamp after the fact. So back to that memento. I'm using one here that says, I rough you. So I'm gonna put that one in one. And I think I'm gonna change up and use some different sentiments too, just to show you, show you some more things from the little stamp set, cause they're super cute. So this one says puppy love. Let's use puppy love on here. So grab this guy and get up. And then put puppy love in the middle. Cute, cute. And then, what else do I want to use on that little bone? Um, how about Bow Wow? That's cute. Put that on here. But I would stamp inside the little bones first, just so you're not having to stamp, um, you know, once you've cut them out. That would be kind of a pain. So I'm not going to make, but I'm only going to make one for us today. So I'm just going to do this and cut one out. I think I'll cut this little guy out. So what I like to do is separate them from each other when I'm fussy cutting. If I was putting this in my scanning cut, I would put it in just like that and not worry about uh, separate, separating them. And then I'm going to cut right to the line. Now, when you're fussy cutting, let's give you some fussy cutting tips. Move the paper and not your blade. Everybody tells you that. There is a time when you need to move the blade. When you get into the corners, you need to adjust the blade. But you, for the most part, you just move the paper into the scissors, especially on a curve. Now, yesterday in a live show I did, I was talking about the fact that I enjoy fussy cutting and that some people don't, but about 50% of the people said they enjoyed a fussy cut. So let's say that you know that your child's having a, a party in their class or you need to make 30 or 40 of these. Go ahead and stamp out all of your little bones. Pick out your favorite movie or turn on YouTube and just sit down and cut while you watch something else. It's super fun to do and it's perfect for when you need to make something like your hands just need to be doing something, but you don't need to have to think about it. That's the kind of craft this is. One of those like take it with you to ball practice kind of things. Like if you're dropping the kids off at ball practice and you're going to sit in the car or you're going to sit in the stands, this is one of those that's perfect for that. You can tell what my life is, right? I picked the kids up from basketball practice. Just yesterday, I sat 30 minutes waiting, and that's because it was better for me to go ahead and sit 30 minutes at the school than go home and then drive. You know what I'm saying? Like, then to make that, so I could have done all of these sitting there. All right, that's the little holder that's going to hold his little face down. Let's make his little face with some stamps also. So I chose to use a stamp set that I have called Happy Tree. Let me show you Happy Tree. Um, I've pulled some off already. Let me put some paper behind it so you can see it. Happy Tree is actually a Christmas set, but it has lots of face images because it's to make the tree happy. And I just went into this little set and pulled out just some little different stamps that I wanted to use. And one of them is this little smile right here. So let me bring this um, ink back over. And I want to show you something. I'm going to lay this little bone down. And the bone lines up almost at the very end of the point like this, just right at that point. And then I know anything above this I can use for face. So there's where her little smile is gonna go, kinda low, okay? And you're thinking, that doesn't look like a dog face. Not yet, we're gonna get there. You gotta hang out and see the magic as it goes. All right, the next thing I need to do, and I've lost my little preloaded stamp here. Here it is. <laughs> I hid it for myself. The next thing is from that same Trixie's Valentine set, I'm going to use this little heart cluster, but I'm only going to use one of the hearts. So this is something I call selective, I don't call, people call selective inking. And I love this. It's where you take an ink pad or whatever you have for inking your stamps up, and you only ink one of the images on the stamp. So instead of inking all three of those hearts, I'm just inking the one. Now, what is this? I have a to and from that I leave on a block all the time for when I'm making tags or things like that. So I just leave those there and use the other side. Then I'm just going to stamp the little heart because that's going to become the nose of our little puppy dog, just like that. By the way, I used um, VersaFine Satin Red for that. And then to finish this out, I'm using a simple pen that I have in my stash. I'm going to draw a line from the nose that curves toward the lip like that. Does that make sense? Can you see that? So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to start at the same line, and then I'm going to break away to a curve like that. So this is the beginning of our puppy mouth. Then in this little section, I'm going to color that in. 
just like this with the pen, just a tiny little section, it's no big deal. And the next thing is I'm putting some little whisker dots right here. I'm not actually gonna do whiskers, I'm just doing some whisker dots. Now on my original, I also traced the heart. I just thought it made the nose stand out a little better. So I'm just tracing around this little heart with my pen and I'm not doing a perfect job because who needs perfect, right? We don't do perfect. All right, next we do eyes for him. And I chose to do, it's like just a little closed eye I'll show you. From the Happy Tree set, there's an eyebrow right here in the top. That's what I'm gonna use for his little closed eyes. So back to my Memento ink ink that up. I would do these in assembly line. Like I wouldn't sit here and do one at a time like this. I would do them all. I would do all my eyes at one time, all my noses at one time, all my faces at one time. So you get this done much faster than, you know, back and forth like I'm doing. Okay. All this is fine and good, but we need some ears. Now I went into my punch stash and I looked for a punch that would make this happen for me. And I found an oval punch. This is one that I have from Stampin' Up. Anytime Stampin' Up um, discontinues some stamps uh, punches, I go buy them because I love them. And I think this is one that was discontinued maybe two years ago, but I'm sure they have another oval punch. So this is an oval. This is what I'm gonna use. You don't have to use an oval. I want you to think outside the box, think about what punches you have and use those. But if you're interested, this one's two and by one and three eighths. And you may have that one in your stash. So I took these little ovals and my bone folder and in the middle of it, I did some of this curving, like really, really breaking the fibers of the paper down to get it to really curve. And then kind of roll it in your hand because you want this ear to flap over. See how that does? Ooh, it kind of hides in there, but I want it to flap over. So there's one ear. Let's do the same. This part in my hand can stay flat because I'm gonna glue that to the page. So it's actually staying flat, which is a good thing. But I want this ear to roll over, just like little puppy ears, like he was listening very intently. Okay, so we'll assemble in a second, but first I wanna put something inside here so whenever the recipient takes the candy out and opens it, they'll have a sentiment. So I'm gonna go back to my Trixie's Valentine set, and I think I'm gonna use the one that says, I'm just wild about you, and I'm also gonna use Will You Be Mine for Valentine's, and that's all in that same set. So here we go, I'm just wild about you, it's gonna go here at the top. Kinda high because I want it to hide behind his little nose, right? So I'm just wild about you. And then I'm gonna do, will you be mine? So this is, will you be mine? Put this on my block, ink it up, and right underneath here, there we go. So cute. Okay, let's assemble. Couldn't get any easier. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and fold this and crease it right over our stamping. Look how our, our stamping hides right behind there. Adorable. Oh, one more thing I did. You don't have to do this, but you see how square this is? You might like that and I'll leave it for you to see how that looks. But I rounded the corners because I thought it was really cute. Actually, let me just compare them for you. You can see the straight lines versus the rounded corners. I don't know, you kind of do that by preference. I think I like the rounded corners. So let's round them real quick. Using my We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder and, and the half inch side to round all the corners. So all my corners are rounded. Now I can put his little ears on, which I think are adorable. So you know the little part that we kept kind of flat in our hand? That's where the glue goes. So put a little bit of glue and just in this area, just bring them over and I'll show you in a second how I kind of doctor them up to kind of make them really kind of weepy. You know how the little, or I should say floppy, you know how puppy ears kind of flop over. So just in both corners, like so. And then after it's dry, I just took it and kind of pushed it down a little bit to have it kind of curl over even a little bit more. And you can twist them a little bit. Just play with those little ears and get them like you want them. Then the bone that's gonna hold this in place, so you're just gonna place this over your little puppy mouth, okay? Make sure everything's fitting, and it is. And I'm just going to glue these little circular bits on the bone right to the page. You could use foam squares here if you wanted to to maybe pop this up, but I don't really see a need to do it. I think this is gonna work just fine. So just make sure you don't glue the face down. Just make sure it's un just underneath your little bone there, like so. And then you're pretty much ready. It can open and close. I'm not gonna do it yet. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. So there you go, our little puppies. What I was gonna tell you is, I think if you wanted to turn this into a kitty cat, you could use these pointed sections that we cut away 
and in some way make yourself some little kitty cat ears. We may have to try that in the future. If you're interested in seeing this done in different animals, let me know because I have several in mind that we could do and I would love to see what you guys do with it. I want to see you interpret it into different animals. So if you do, if you're inspired to do that by these I made today, share them with us over on our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I. That's where we love to see the projects that I inspire you to make, what you do, or share them to our customer gallery at our website. And you can find that by going to maymaymadeit.com, hovering over the word more. It'll drop down and the customer gallery will show. There is so much inspiration for you there. So go check that out. So let's open the one. I didn't stamp on the inside of this one. Let's open the one that I did. So you give this to the recipient. They pull out his little face and look, I'm just wild about you. Will you be mine? How cute. Hey, thanks so much for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And let me know if you want to see me turn it into other animals. It would be super fun. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.